Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a video about the Dupfer A162 clock divider, which is a um, pretty simple module from Dupfer. I came up with this patch while I was researching ideas for another video I'm making about utility modules, and I'm going to look at the clock divider as part of that. But this patch sounded quite cool, so I thought I'd break this down and do a little separate video on it in the meantime. Um, so a clock divider is basically a module that takes in a stream of gates or triggers, like a clock signal, and then it outputs various divisions of that clock. So every every two times it gets a clock there, it'll output one here. And then depending on the way you've got this switch set, you can either output, um, the divisions are either integers from 2 to 8, or they are prime numbers from 2 to 17, or they are powers of 2 from 2 down to 128. So that means at the slowest every 128 clocks that it receives here, it'll output one at the bottom. And you can toggle between those integers, primes, and powers of two with that switch. Now, what's interesting about the A162 is, rather than using it for rhythmic triggers to trigger drum sounds or power sequences, you can feed in an audio rate signal. And what that will produce at the outputs is square waves at various subharmonic divisions of your input frequency. So if you're inputting a 440 hertz square wave here, you'll get a 220 hertz square wave out of the divide by two output and so on. And that, uh, these square waves are kind of slightly glitchy from this, it's not perfect, but that kind of gives it a bit character, I think. And because you can use all these outputs simultaneously, you can kind of stack them and create a kind of interesting mix of sub oscillators from an input signal. So let's crack on. I've got a few modules already kind of patched up to be the output chain of this patch. So I'm going to basically whatever I'm running out of this clock divided area, um, I'm going to be running eventually through the uh, AI synthesis AI004 filter, which is an MS20 style filter, nice gnarly character. That's going into the music theme modular spring reverb with a digital brick inside. Then it's going into Monsoon, which is a clone from CalSynth of Clouds, which I'm going to use for a little bit of granular delay and a bit of a, well, quite a big wash of reverb at the end, just to kind of smooth things out. Um, the clock divider sitting here, and I've got various other things which I'm going to use, which I'll introduce as I come to them. So to start with, we really just need a uh, output of an oscillator to feed into the clock divider. And it doesn't really matter what we use, because I'm not going to use the sound of this input oscillator. I'm just going to use it to provide effectively a very high frequency clock into this. So I'm going to use the Plum Audio Roved, which is a Platts clone. I'm just going to use it in a very simple square waveform kind of mode. Let's just um, feed that through the scope so you can see what that looks like. Just a square wave. And if you want to hear what that sounds like, it's basically uh, this. And I'm actually going to feed the Volt Per Octave input of that from stages. Because I've got a few different note pitches kind of programmed here in a little sequence that I can step through. And just for the minute, I'm going to put use a manual gate here to step through them. And again, if I just take the output so you can hear what I'm doing. I'll just leave it on there. So I'm going to take the output of plats directly into that clock divider. I'm just going to take this first output through the scope. and then through the output chain. So you can hear and see it's a sort of zero to 10 volt um, square wave. And if I just jump literally through these outputs, um, this is in the integer mode two to eight, so let's divide by two. Yeah, that's the subharmonic series, which you might be familiar with if you've ever played with a Moog subharmonicon. Um, and if I put to prime mode, then we've got the divide by two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, and seventeen. And if I go into the uh, powers of two mode, then we've got divide by two, which is one octave below, divide by four, which is two octaves below, and we just go down through the octaves basically. going to be inaudible um, up below that pretty much. So my thought with this patch was, since we've got these outputs available simultaneously, why don't I take four of them into blinds, mix them together, and then use a bit of modulation 
through blinds to control the relative levels of them so that we get this kind of morphing evolving sound built on all these subharmonics. So let's take, I'm going to go back into the two to eight mode to start with. I'm going to take the divide by two, the divide by three, the divide by four, and the divide by, I'm going to skip one and go down to the divide by six because these will give me a quite nice chord effectively. Let's just take this mix and then in blinds if I bring up these one at a time. So that's the one octave below. That's another fifth lower. If I just step through the pitches in stages Now you see they're all 0 to 10, so they get the waveform's getting pretty jam-packed quite quickly. So another nice thing to do is take, invert a couple of them. So I'm going to alternate up and down until I've got a waveform that kind of spans the same kind of range, but bipolar. You can see on the scope, it's quite an interesting shape already, just like that. Now what's more interesting is to vary the levels of each of these as we go. So I'm going to use the Geronalog Filter 8 in LFO mode. And this basically has eight out of phase um, LFO outputs, sine wave LFOs. You can see these blue and red LEDs here. These are all 45 degrees out of phase with each other. So I'm going to take four of these into the you see, inputs respectively on the four channels of blinds. And now as I bring up and down and up, now we've got this dynamic waveform where the various subharmonics are fading in and out. And now if I bring the filter down, Add a bit of spring, a little bit of resonance to the filter. Slow down that modulation slightly. And let's add a bit of master reverb from Monsoon. Get a little bit more modulation going. I'm going to take into the filter. I've got the Takabar LFO with the slewed out, but it's basically just giving me a bit of smooth random. So I'm going to use that to just give the filter a bit of random movement, but quite subtle. That resonance gets really growly. And I'm also going to patch the joystick over here into the filter cutoff and the wet dry on monsoon. And I'm going to take a clock out of Pamela's new workout into the trigger on monsoon just so I've got something rhythmic. And I'm going to take the gate that's firing stages out of the clock on Pamela's new workout as well. And now if I hit play. Mm -hmm. 
Let's bring in a bit of the monsoon effects. So this joystick gives me a little bit of expressive control over this patch. going to try one other combination of outputs because this chord is quite nice but let's get it a bit deeper by flipping to if I'm in the powers of two mode I've now got four octaves it's a big four octave stack let's give this a bit more drive using a clock divider or audio rates to create subharmonics. Really interesting character, it's a bit different from a regular oscillator. If you've enjoyed this, please do like and subscribe, it all helps. I'll be back soon, I've got a few things in the pipeline. As ever, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.